the authority to well, essentially do its job as explained. However, the importance of other anomaly agencies tends to I be want an analysis in... team set up over there, Wait, coffee what? station over there, and uh, you take over that Personia doing his videos. Uh, what's going on here? This organization is being taken over by the Central Intelligence Agency. Starting from now, you answer to me. The CIA? This is an authority installation in the middle of nowhere. Your federal agency has no right to be here anyway. Not anymore, they don't. Under the Defense Production Act, we are taking over this organization and absorbing this department. So you and you answer to me. On whose authority? The Secretary of Defense. We're with the National Security Agency and you had your shot around here, CIA, but the NSA will be taking over this department. Uh, not anymore, you're not. We have the full authority of the United States Attorney General to take over this department. So all of you are answering to me and the Justice Department. Not anymore. Orders came from the President of the United States. He wants the Secret Service and his staff to take over this matter. So all of you are answering to me and Senior Special Agent Pearson. <sighs> you know, this is why I don't exactly answer to any department or governing agencies when it comes to explaining the veil and respective anomalies out there. Jurisdiction between governments, and in this case the authority, is tricky to navigate, let alone enforce their ability to do their jobs. The authority and respective anomaly agencies are mandated by their duties to protect the globe from the anomalous, but are also mandated by international treaties such as the International Anomalous Accords to maintain some semblance of normalcy. Of course, the latter is certainly not going to be followed by everyone as there are many nations who covertly contain anomalies, often utilize them for their own benefit. However, with that said, many of these nations do side with the accords whenever global security is at risk. <sighs> oh jeez. Right, um, let's go to the next room and continue this on. But before we do that, uh, here's a video from our sponsors. So, let's talk about agencies of interest, their relations with the ARPC authority, and how they differ from other anomaly agencies. Before we continue, do governments necessarily allow the authority to take jurisdiction in conducting containment operations in their sovereign territory? Well, yes and no. As previously mentioned in the Let's Talk About Anti-Authority Nations video, foreign policy stance towards the authority depend largely on their historical relations, their national interest, and sovereignty. To be more specific, it depends on the government's interest and whether they can handle containment operations in their own territory. Majority of these nations across the globe, particularly underdeveloped or developing nations, are unable to do so, which forces them to be commonly relying on the authority and its uh, containment abilities. For those nations, however, that are developed and financially capable, they operate their own anomaly agency or agency of interest to protect their own territory for two main reasons. Ensuring that they are capable of handling anomalies without external assistance, and making sure that they aren't too dependent on the authority. However, there are a handful of anomaly agencies that don't often adhere to the policies of their government. This is why when I did the anti-authority nations video, I specifically avoided stating that anomaly agencies and government follow the same interests. Now, let's go over the known anomaly agencies according to the authority database. So let's start off with China and its Anomaly Agency. The People's Committee for the Acquisition of Anomalous Objects, abbreviated as PCAAO, is the Anomaly Agency for the People's Republic of China that was established in the wake of the Communist victory in the Chinese Civil War. The structure of the committee consists of various leading Chinese scientists and battalions supplied by the People's Liberation Army, but their parallel influence is more notable in their expanding influence across Asia and Africa. Relations with the Chinese agency are described as ambiguous given their tenuous relations from historical precedent, but it will otherwise pursue their own interests given the opportunity. 
However, with that stated, the community in the 21st century is seemingly torn between the opposite impulses, between being the international agency that works for the good of mankind versus the ruthless paramilitaries that protect China and her people from the anomalous at any cost, often at others' expenses. Moving into the British Isles, we have Military Intelligence Section 13, otherwise known as Monarch Security. Monarch Security is the anomaly agency for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, primarily observed to be operating in the British Isles and British Overseas Territories. They are a meticulous agency, having investigated the Veil for centuries and developing advanced magical techniques to battle the Veil. And thus, Military Intelligence Section 13, the predecessor of Monarch Security, was created. Unlike the Authority and other foreign anomaly agencies, Monarch Security has been the leading institute in occult sciences, wizardry, and advanced sorcery that has given the agency the upper hand in containment operations. Since first contact with the British government in 1903, Monarch Security continues to be an important agency to the Authority as one of its closest allies. As the leading anomaly agency for international deliberation and regulation, we have the United Nations Anomalous Activities Committee. Pronounced as UNAC, or UNAAC in its abbreviated term, the United Nations Anomalous Activities Committee is one of, if not a well-known anomaly agency due to its important roles in ensuring coordination of normalcy and preventing nations from exploiting the veil for their use. Despite the latter, it is a body that is powerless to many within the international community, but nonetheless important as a dialogue body to ensure understanding and cooperation amongst nations within the globe. Since its foundation in 1945, the UNAAC has operated a peacekeeping force under the United Nations International Security Assistance Force that provides tactical peacekeeping to regions that require containment and suppression of anomalous contact. Today, the Authority remains as a quote, consultative state within the UNAAC, often providing its containment services to anomalies considered a threat to international security. Once formerly a United States investigation group determining the national security nature of unidentified aerial phenomenon, we have Project Blue Book. Project Blue Book was once formally an initiative launched by the US government until its unspecified transition to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. As a NATO component, Blue Book has transformed into a large-scale multinational agency to resist incursion and assault by, quote, non-human entities and research technologies for the defense of humanity. Given Blue Book has access to NATO resources, it enables the organization to maintain multiple theaters of operations and can be found globally, with the most notable being the Blue Book's Solar Theater tasked with Earth's defenses against extraterrestrial origin. However, relations with the Authority are commonly met with competitiveness and hostilities due to Blue Book pursuing anomalous interests in containing or, in some cases, termination of RPCs. As it maintains a great deal of support from its NATO member states, aside from a few nations, it continues to be quote, more loyal and properly check in comparison to that of the authority, end quote. As remnants of the unstable and collapsing papal Octoritas, the Vatican Secretariat of Supernatural Primacy, commonly referred to as the Primacy, is the anomaly agency for the Vatican City State. Established in response to the RPC authorities' declaration for independence from the Catholic Church, the Primacy's goals are primarily reserving holy relics and secret doctrines of the faith, and defending the papacy from supernatural threats. The Primacy was traditionally composed of Catholic mercenaries under the military vicariate that fought under the church's name, until reform efforts reorganized its mercenaries into a dicastery of Roman Curia. The Roman Curia were known for their warlike mentality, resulting in numerous incidents with the authority. However, the church reformed the organization once more to moderate its aggressive behavior, instead opting to cooperate with the UNAAC and the authority on a case-by-case -case basis. Relations with the authority are ambiguous, but are viewed with historical resentment. As the authority's position and influence in the world stage became more formidable, the Primacy stands by to take over the Authority's position when given the opportunity. These are the identified agencies of interest in accordance with Authority intelligence. However, there are a few anomaly agencies that are currently confidential due to lack of information or intelligence gathering of these agencies of interest are still ongoing. Nonetheless, let's have a look over these ongoing cases. 
Focusing on the German state, the German government sponsors an anomaly agency under the name Bundesokkultabteilung aus der Deutschen Sprache Übersetz als Federal Occult Agency. <sighs> oh my god, I'm getting too much fun here with the German language. Uh, ich liebe Deutschland. Hmm. Um, anywho, the Federal Occult Agency is charged with investigation, containment, and elimination of anomalous objects, persons, entities, and organizations that threaten the Federal Republic of Germany and its people. The agency in question can be traced back to several semi-organized groups of witch hunters operating in parts of the Holy Roman Empire between the 15th and 16th century. A brief tenuous period occurred during the Second World War when the agency, previously operating under the name Reich Okkultabteilung, under the Imperial Occult Agency, declared hostilities with the authority. Following 1945, the agency was restored under the auspices of the UNAAC and the West German government in 1949. Becoming a recognizable power within the Asian continent, the Indian National Defense Initiative for the Reclamation of Anomalies, abbreviated as Indira, is the anomaly agency for the Republic of India. Considered to be the largest contemporary group, Indira was formed after the independence of India from the British Empire. While initially created as a small task force for collecting and storing anomalous objects, their goals and motives transition into utilizing anomalies to provide the Indian people achieve a post-human state of being. The agency holds this ideological notion that anomalies somehow relate to the pantheon present in Hinduism and other religions originating from the Indian subcontinent. Nonetheless, Indira deploys them for covert operations or aiding the Indian population in general. Their liberal use of anomalies, rivalries with the PCAO and monarch security, along with radical beliefs, have caused the agency to become more radical, including at times becoming an unpredictable player on the global stage. Controversially involved in numerous political and security events, the Ministry of Paranormality is the anomaly agency for the Russian Federation. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the modern Russian Federation was left without any anomaly institute to continue on its mandate for anomaly security and protection. President Boris Yeltsin refused to form an anomaly agency in hopes that an entrepreneurial businessman would step in. This, however, resulted in the PCAAO to extend its power across Central Asia, the Mongolian region, and the Russian Far East, but also resulted in the anomaly market period. Furthermore, many Soviet researchers from the dissolved Soviet Art Initiative defected to the authority and other anomalous agencies. All of these factors resulted in the Russian Ministry of Defense taking action on preventing the loss of important anomalous assets, but ultimately was fraught by internal issues such as lack of funding, training, and resources to contain anomalies. These issues continued until 2003, when the Ministry of Paranormality was established under the supervision of the Ministry of Internal Affairs up until becoming independent in June 13, 2003. Long considered as a competitive and unfriendly nation within the Western world, we have the United States occult community. The U.S. occult community, while under the arms of the United States, is in fact an amalgamation of three federal agencies and one executive department the Office of Extranormal Security Affairs, the Joint Task Force Occult, Special Activity Center Unit 9, and Executive Council of Mistress Columbia. The Office of Extranormal Security Affairs, abbreviated as OESA and also known as Division 15, is the anomaly unit for the United States Secret Service, charged with providing the need for anomalous law enforcement. Much about the agency is little known, as information is mainly chalked up to fairy tales at best, and seemingly gross exaggerations at worst. The agency was created at the request of J. Edgar Hoover in a move to seemingly increase the political power of the Federal Bureau of Investigation at the time. How it ended up in the Secret Service is an anecdote lost to the archives. The Joint Task Force Occult is the military arms of the United States government, overseen by the Department of Defense, consisting of various scientific, military, and intelligence personnel. As their role within the anomalous community is not clearly consistent with other anomaly agencies, they are elements that arrive with tanks and fighter jets, with some viewing the Joint Task Force Occult as the perfect representation of American anomalous policy, brash, reckless, and murderous. Special Activity Center Unit 9, self-designated as Pantheocide, is the anomalous arms of the United States Central Intelligence Agency. This unit was formed during the Cold War to counteract and conduct covert operations against the Soviet Union and its anomaly counterpart. 
In some operations, the unit draws funds towards the agency for anomaly operations through illegal clandestine efforts. Unlike any of its counterparts from the Defense Department and Homeland Security, Unit 9 works almost entirely independent from the agency and often at times goes against the directives of the executive branch. Considered by many as unhinged, unstable, and quite insane, most agents working for the unit are often irrational and believed to be quote, above gods. As it stands, the unit goals are objectively vague, with the organization entirely leading towards an unorthodox activities such as conducting rituals to praise an unknown god, in hopes that the United States will be blessed with infinite powers to quote, truly become the shining city upon a hill, end quote. The Executive Council for the Mistress Columbia, also known as Miss Cole, is viewed by many as a cryptic Delphic organization acting on the fringes of legality within the United States federal government. While its relations with the federal government remain unclear, it seems to command the United States occult community through unknown political influence and unsourced vested legal power. Miss Cole is considered as a hostile institute towards the authority, brushed by its consistency for American supremacy while day-to-day -day actions reveal opaque goals. And these are all the agencies of interest, both known and unknown, of the RPC authority. Many anomaly agencies, as you've seen, are proved to be an ally or acquaintance of the authority. However, the same cannot be said to those anomaly agencies that were established as political means to sway away from authority influence or to seek their own exploits to take advantage of the veil. So, what anomaly agency you like from the ones I've explained? Let me know in the comments below and... <sighs> which one? CIA? NSA? FBI? Or Secret Service? Which guys did you agree upon? Wait, hold on. A quote. Wait, you, you guys are with 